Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera to all my students. So today we are going to continue chapter for the periodic table of elements. So our subtopic today is 4.5 element in group 17. So in the previous lesson we have learned the group 1. So basically okay element in group 17 okay located here in the uh, column number 17 okay number 17 so in the previous lesson kita dah belajar element in group 1 so they are the metal element kan okay so now for non metal element kita akan belajar untuk group 17 okay then after that kita akan belajar satu period iaitu period 3 Okay, uh, for the 4.6. So, today kita fokus dulu pada element include 17. Okay, so they are fluorine, the chemical formula F2, chlorine, Cl2, bromine, Br2, iodine, I2, estatine, E2, then tennessine, Ts2. Okay, as usual, you have to memorize the formula of, of for each of the element. Okay, so and you have to memorize the position of the element atas sekali adalah fluorine. Chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine, and tennessine. So, element in group 17 also known as halogen gas. So, they are gases. That's why formula dia diatomic macam ni. Okay, ada dua-dua-dua. Macam oxygen gas, O2. Hydrogen gas, H2. Uh, compare dengan group 1, tak ada 2 kan. Dia atom sahaja because dia metal. So, sekarang dia adalah gas. Okay, this one example of the element in group 1. Chlorine, you can see, is a pale yellow color. It's a pale yellow color gas. Bromine is quite uh, brownish. And iodine is a purplish uh, solid. Okay. So, some uses of group elements, uh, group 17 element. Chlorine is used in bleach. Uh, dalam chlorox. So, nama dia chlorox. Uh, so, asal perkataan chlorine. Uh, dia digunakan sebagai agent peluntur. The bromine as a substance in fire extinguisher. So, dalam fire extinguisher, actually bromine salah satu substance yang digunakan eh, untuk jadikan uh, uh, yang digunakan sebagai bahan untuk menghasilkan fire extinguisher. And then, iodine as a disinfectant. So, ubat kuning eh, ubat kuning. Kalau luka-luka tu biasa kita guna iodine yang warna kuning tu. Untuk matikan kuman eh, dia disinfectant iodine. Okay. Ada banyak lagi digunakan kegunaan you can uh, read in your reference book or textbook. Okay, so general physical uh, properties of group 17 element. It is poisonous. Uh, semua group 17 ni sangat berbahaya. Eh? Poisonous beracun. Known as halogen dan dia berwarna. So halogen exists as diatomic molecule. So you can see you can see the formula, the chemical formula of the compound. Semuanya Cl2, F2, Br2, right? So they are diatomic. Di maknanya dua atom. Okay, so they are non-metal because they are gases. Okay, bukan logam lah. Okay, this is the color of the uh, halogen gas. So, fluorine is a pale yellow gas. Uh, okay, so you must memorize this one. You are going to use this until form 5. Chlorine is a greenish yellow gas. Bromine is a reddish brown solid. Okay, bromine is a brown. Chlorine, fluorine is quite yellow lah. Boleh cakap yellow lah. Okay, iodine is purplish black solid. Ha, yang ni dah jadi solid. Iodine dah jadi solid. Bromine liquid. Dua atas ni fluorine. And chlorine usually is a gas at room temperature. However, dia boleh jadi dalam bentuk any state eh. Depends on the temperature. Ha, bromine boleh jadi gas. Sekiranya dipanaskan. Ha, boleh berubah jadi solid. Depends on the temperature. Okay, kita tengok dia punya electron arrangement. So, fluorine kita tahu proton number is 9. So, electron arrangement 2.7. Chlorine 17. So, 2.8.7 bromine dan seterusnya kita boleh tengok dia punya valence electron semuanya 7 ok so in order to achieve stability dia mesti gain 1 electron to achieve octet uh, compare nak release 7 ataupun gain 1 gain 1 lagi senang that's why dia punya reactivity depends on the ability to gain the electron easier to gain electron 
the element becomes more reactive. Okay, we'll be explained later on. Okay, so di sini kita boleh tengok dia punya number of shell akan bertambah as going down the group uh, sebab proton number bertambah kan jadi bila dengan shell dia makin bertambah jadi size dia makin bertambah going down the group macam group 1 juga ok so all group 17 element have 7 valence electron so do not achieve stable octet or duplet electron regimen so macam mana untuk achieve the stability macam cikgu explain tadi dia kena gain 1 electron to achieve octet Tak lah semua kan dah, dah, dah dapat satu dia akan jadi 28 Yang ni 288, 28, 18, 7, 8 Okay so semua akan jadi octet So apa akan berlaku dia akan form negatif ion ha, Macam tadi kalau group 1 matter dia akan donate satu Lepas donate kita jadi orang yang baik Kita akan form cat ion plus ion Sekarang dia terbalik untuk group 17 So in order to achieve stability They must receive satu kita bila menerima menerima meminta ni bermakna kita orang yang negatif so sign nanti akan jadi negatif so dia akan jadi n ion Okay, the first thing is the physical properties of the element in group 70 Macam group 1 juga tadi akan ada You kena tahu dia punya physical properties So, they are the first one is the physical state Melting and boiling point The last one is the density Sama juga, cikgu akan go through very fast in this one uh, Okay, so chlorine, bromine and, uh, Sorry, fluorine and chlorine They are cases Bromine, liquid, iodine is a solid So, melting point dia When going down the group also increased Density also also increase this one cikgu rasa you can read the notes sama juga dengan group 1 lebih kurang sahaja tadi eh ok so the atomic size semakin bertambah kerana number of shell occupied with electron is increases ok bilangan shell bila menuruni kumpulan size atom dia semakin bertambah disebabkan pertambahannya uh, bilangan shell yang terisi dengan elektron jadi jarak di antara nukleus dengan uh, valence elektron per valence shell becomes further so the radius becomes bigger so the size atomic size become increases ok melting and boiling point sama juga macam tadi eh. ok so when going down the group the melting and boiling point decreases Okay, so because the atomic size going down the group is increases, so the force of attraction between molecules becomes stronger. Okay, so more heat energy required to overcome the strong intermolecular forces during the melting point. So it should be increases this one, not decreases. Dia terbalik dengan group 1. Group 1 memang dia akan semakin decreases. Okay, disebabkan oleh metallic bonding Tapi untuk yang ni, kita panggil dia intermolecular force Dia berbeza Intermolecular force, bila saiz makin besar Force of attraction dia makin kuat antara molekul So, bila dia, uh, dia punya daya tarikan semakin kuat Dia memerlukan more heat energy To overcome the strong intermolecular force during melting and boiling point so dia terbalik dia berbeza dengan uh, group 1 tadi so you can alert lah this one okay so next is the density dia lebih kurang pet lebih kurang sama macam pattern group 1 going down the group density increases because related to the RAM okay Alright, this is the important one The chemical properties of group 17 elements So, all group 17 have 7 valence electrons So, they will show the similar chemical properties So, group 17 of course ada 7 valence electron Ada 7 bilangan elektron berada di petala paling luar So, fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine have a similar chemical properties But differ in reactivity So, sama juga macam group 1 Sifat dia sama tetapi Kereaktifan dia berbeza Ok So di sini ya, Tengok dia punya general equation X is, is the group 17 element Dia must gain electron plus electron ha, Tadi kan dia mesti receive satu electron In order to stable After receive dia akan jadi negative and ion Negative ion which is an ion Ok kita akan tengok Contoh, ok, for example, fluorine, asal dia fluorine atom 2, 7, after gain 1 electron, dia akan become fluoride ion, ok, nama dia berubah, kalau atom dia fluorine, I, N, E di belakang, selepas dia receive electron, dia akan jadi fluoride 
R I D E di belakang. Okay, so after receive electron dia akan jadi octet 28. The same goes for chlorine. Okay, asal dia 287. Okay, chlorine atom. So in order to stable, it must gain one electron and after it gain one electron becomes chloride ion 288. So dah stable. Ha, that's why dia punya general equation macam ni. Dia terbalik macam group 1. Group 1 donate. Yang ni gain. Okay, so how to achieve the stability by accepting one electron valence to achieve octet electron arrangement, which is, which is to form the positive ion, sorry, negative ion, which is an ion. I need error lagi, eh? Okay, reactivity of group 70 depends on how easy the atom can accept or gain electron. Ha, dia terbalik dengan group 1. Okay, kalau group 1 tadi, reactivity depends on the easiness to donate. Lagi senang dia donate, lagi reaktif. Ha, manakala group 17, lagi senang dia accept, dia terima, dia akan lagi more reaktif. So, atom which is easier to accept, is more reactive. Okay, atom mana yang lagi senang untuk menerima elektron, dia akan jadi more reactive. So, how to know the easiness of the atom to gain elektron? So, relate balik dengan 5 point juga. Sama macam group 1. Cuma, elaboration dia terbalik. Okay, so when going down the group 17, we know that the atomic size increase. So, chlorine lagi kecil, bromine makin besar, iodine makin besar. So, bila berlaku, bila saiznya makin besar, menyebabkan valence shell ataupun shell paling luar ni berada makin jauh dengan nucleus. Jarak antara valence shell dengan nucleus become further. So, menyebabkan force of attraction. So, daya tarikan antara nucleus ni dengan shell ni semakin lemah, gets weaker. So, bila makin lemah, makin susahlah untuk, sorry, bila, sorry, ha, bila makin makin jauh, makin lemah, jadi makin susahlah untuk dia attract ataupun gain elektron. So, menyebabkan dia punya reactivity decreases. Ha, dia terbalik, decreases going down the group. So, bermakna dalam group 17, atas sekali iaitu fluorine, kemudian chlorine. Ha, so, the most reactive active it is fluorine then chlorine paling kurang reaktif sekali adalah iodine dan estetin bawah lagi satu kenapa okey contoh saya ambil compare chlorine dengan bromine so kita boleh cakap the atomic size of chlorine is smaller than bromine so the valent shell okey the valent shell is Closer lah kan. Ha, chlorine lagi closer compared to bromine. Okay. So, the force of attraction between nucleus dalam chlorine is stronger compared to bromine because dia makin kecil. So, it is easier for atom chlorine to attract one valence elect one electron to achieve stable octet electron arrangement. Okay, compare dengan bromine. Bromine jarak makin berjarak apa ni. Dia punya distance is bigger, right? So, attraction force weaker. Jadi, harder to gain electron. Jadi, dia less reactive compared to chlorine. Okay. So, the reactivity of the chlorine is more reactive compared to bromine because chlorine is easier to gain compared to bromine. Gain of electron. Okay, two example. Okay, so this is the conclusion. So the most reactive is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and the last one is iodine. So as usual, untuk membuktikan kereaktifan dia, kita akan buat tiga eksperimen untuk group 17. So dia, kita akan react group 17 dengan water. Second, group 17 dengan hot iron, Fe, metal. Dan ketiga, group 17 dengan sodium hydroxide, alkaline. Okay. So kita tengok, go through one by one. For the first reaction between halogen, a group 17 with water. So the product is two acid. Okay, they can produce two genus acid. Okay, so halogen reacts vigorously with water to produce two acid solution. So you must remember the punya general equation. Kita tahu, bila group 17 react dengan water, automatically produknya ada dua acid. 
uh, ni HX dengan HOX So X di sini kita akan ganti dengan halogen Iaitu fluorine, chlorine, bromine Okay So kita ambil example Chlorine dahulu So kat sini ganti saja X2 Bermakna X ni kita ambil Cl Bermakna Cl2 plus dengan water H2O To produce the first acid HX So H macam biasa X ganti dengan Cl Jadi dia akan dapat HCl Iaitu hydrochloric acid The second product is HOX right? So HO tulis macam biasa X ni ganti dengan Cl Jadi HOCl Nama dia hypochlorous acid ha, Inilah dia punya dua acid yang terhasil So you put balance-balance like equation So this one cikgu rasa dah balance lah Okay, so how reaction ni berlaku, you kena tahu juga macam mana reaction ni berlaku. Okay, tengok kat sini, dia react antara concentrated hydrochloric acid. Eh, eksperimen ni, okay, react dengan potassium manganik crystal. So, bila dia tambah dua bahan ni, dia akan produce uh, Cl2 gas. Okay, dia akan produce gas chlorine. Okay, bila dua bahan ni bertindak pada dia akan produce chlorine gas. So, gas chlorine ni akan mengalir masuk dalam ni dan kita akan alirkan dalam water. So, inilah dia punya reaction berlaku dalam ni. So, after the reaction dalam ni, dia akan produce dua acid. Iaitu ada chloric acid dengan hypochlorous acid. Okay, you kena faham dia punya diagram eh. Okay, because kenapa dia, dia kena react macam ni? Because chlorine is very reactive. So, susah untuk kita nak apa ni, nak guna chlorine gas directly, dia very very dangerous. Jadi, kita kena produce dia melalui tindak balas kimia antara potassium mangganik dan concentrated hydrochloric acid. Ha, dalam ni ada chlorine gas ni. Okay, nanti dia akan release. Okay, so dia punya observation, macam biasa you kena tahu. Okay, so the greenish yellow gas dissolve quickly in water. Okay, bila react dua ni, dia akan produce greenish yellow gas. Greenish yellow gas tu adalah chlorine gas. So, chlorine gas ni akan dissolve, akan larut dalam distilled water to form pale yellow solution. Dalam ni nanti akan jadi warna pale yellow solution. Ni ada acid tadi. So, kita akan test acid ni by using blue litmus paper which is dia akan turns into red. Okay, and then white. Ha, kenapa white? Ha, because acid ni adalah bleaching agent. Dia akan meluntorkan warna litmus paper ni daripada biru jadi merah. Lepas merah, lama-lama dia jadi warna putih. Ha, that's why klorok kan. Ha, bahan agent peluntur. So, kertas litmus tu nanti akan terluntur. Ha, because chlorine ni is strong. is the uh, reactive. Okay, so kita akan compare dengan Bromine and iodine. So, kita tahu going down the group, dia makin kurang reaktif kan. Jadi, you kena differentiate dia punya observation. So, kalau bromine, dia warna reddish brown. Ingat, bromine gas warna reddish brown. Okay, liquid we dissolve slowly in water. Okay, yang ni directly saja dalam tabung uji ni letak air, kita akan ambil bromine water. Bromine water dia kurang reaktif, jadi kita boleh guna dia directly. Tak perlu buat reaction macam ni. So, ambil titik je dalam water. So, dia akan larut dalam water. So, blue litmus paper turns red. Okay, sebab dia pun acidic juga. Daripada biru jadi warna merah. And it takes longer time to become white. Ha, jadi, dia akan terluntur juga. Tapi, lambat. Because dia weak compared to chlorine. Chlorine tadi sekejap je dia akan terluntur warna biru jadi merah. Merah jadi warna putih. Okay, yang ni lambat sikit tapi still terluntur. Because uh, dia punya acid ni dia weak sikit compared dengan HCl. Jadi di sini dalam reaction ni chemical equation ganti saja X dengan Br2. Ha, Cl tadi kan dengan Br2. Water sama. So sini Cl ganti dengan Br2. Sini Cl ganti dengan Br. The same. That's why you kena ingat dia punya general equation. The same goes for the iodine. So, cuma bezanya iodine ni dia warna purplish black iodine. Ha, tak kalau bromine dia liquid kan tadi. So kalau iodine kita jangan letak ketulan iodine dalam water. So dia akan dissolve slowly. Ha, because dia solid kan dia akan paling lambat untuk dia larut. In water to form light brown solution. Warna brown. So dia akan baru The blue litmus paper does not change. Okay. Uh, sebab dia do not show SCD and bleaching properties. Uh, iodine ni, nanti kertas litmus tak berubah. Because dia tidak menunjukkan sifat berasid. Dia terlalu lemah. So, dia tidak mampu untuk tunjuk SCD properties or bleaching ataupun bleaching properties. So, kertas litmus tak berubah, tak terluntur. Cuma bromine dan chlorine je dia berubah. So, this one you have to memorize. 
Okay, the second reaction. Okay, halogen dengan hot ion ataupun metal uh, logam ion. Okay, so the product is ion three halides. Uh, ni metal halide. So halogen in gaseous state react with hot ion Fe to form brown solid. Uh, ni warna brown because ion three is brown in color. Dia memang warna perang. Okay, for example, kita tengok je. Okay, this one is general equation. X2 is the uh, halogen lah. X ni reacts dengan Fe is the hot iron. And then product dia metal halide. So, kat sini gas, chlorine gas. For example, kita ambil Cl2 plus an Fe. After the reaction, it will produce Fe Cl3. So, kat sini because ion 3, you kena cross Cl minus dengan Fe3 plus. Jadi, you akan dapat... FeCl3 So you pun balance lah equation Dapat dua sini Dapat dua sini Dapat tiga sini So inilah dia punya nama Metal halide Iaitu ion 3 chloride Okay So kena ada Roman 3 eh Okay So macam mana reaction ni berlaku Okay sama juga tadi Sebab kita nak produce chlorine gas Jadi kita akan react Concentrated hydrochloric acid Dengan potassium manganet Nanti akan release Chlorine gas. Chlorine gas akan masuk dalam ni. Masuk dalam ni. So, berlaku lah reaction dengan. Ha, di sinilah ion eh. Ion wool. Kapas ka. Uh, sorry. Uh, apa ni? In Malay, ion wool macam gentian. Gentian besi eh. Gentian besi. Okay. Ha, dia punya formula is Fe. This one lah. Okay. Ion wool plus dengan chlorine gas Cl2. So, berlaku lah reaction kat sini. So, after reaction, dia akan produce brown solid dalam ni iaitu FeCl3 ion 3 chloride. Okay. So, dia punya observation for chlorine. Okay. Kena tahu. Kena beza. So, ion wool ni akan bila dipanaskan will burn rapidly with the bright flame. Ha, untuk menunjukkan bahawa chlorine is the most reactive. Dia akan burn rapidly. Sangat pantas dan menghasilkan flame yang sangat terang. So, nanti at the end of reaction, we produce brown solid. Okay. So, the equation cikgu dah terangkan tadi. Okay. So, look at now for uh, bromine. Okay, bromine kita tahu dia kurang reaktif kan. Jadi, uh, dia akan, ion wool tadi akan glow sahaja. Dia tak burns. Dia cuma berbara. Kalau burns tadi, dia terbakar. This one, dia glow. Glow meaning dia less reaktif lah. Dia cuma ber, berbara brightly with a bright flame. Tetapi api dia uh, terang juga. Cuma dia glow. Dia tak terbakar. Itu menunjukkan dia kurang reaktif compare dengan chlorine. So, produk dia pun sama juga. Akan produce brown solid. Cuma bezanya sini, kita ganti saja Br2. Tak ada Cl2 kan dengan F. E. So, produk dia FeBr3, ion 3 bromide. Because kita dah guna bromine. So, bromine. Dia akan jadi bromide. Kalau chlorine, jadi chloride tadi. Okay. Ha, you kena tahulah nama-nama dia. Okay. So, tengok dia punya reaction. Okay. This one directly saja Tak react lah. Tak, kalau tak ada chlorine gas, kena react acid dengan potassium manganik kan. Untuk release chlorine gas. Yang ni kita boleh guna direct saja liquid, liquid bromine. Because dia less reactive. Jadi, dia kurang bahaya. So, kita just panaskan saja nanti bromine ni liquid ni akan uh, akan subline akan ter ter termerge wap what you call it <laughs> sublimation akan jadi bromine gas bromine gas masuk dalam ni react dengan ion wool so after reaction dia akan jadi fe dr3 ion3 bromide okay and the last one is iodine sorry it's not iodide iodine Should be iodine. Okay, tukar saja I2 react dengan Fe produce FeI3. So, nama dia ion 3 iodide. From iodine becomes iodide. So, di sini dia punya beza glow dimly. Ha, kan? The least reactive. Paling kurang reactive sekali. Ion wool ni akan uh, berbara dengan malap. Ha, tadi terang kan. Ha, dah malap dan sangat perlahan. At the end of the reaction, dia akan produce brown solid which is ion 3 iodide. Because kita bakar dengan hot ion tadi dengan iodine gas. Kalau bakar dengan bromine, akan jadi ion 3 bromide. Kalau bakar dengan chlorine, ion 3 chloride. Okay, equation dia sama saja. Just ganti X ni dengan I. Okay, the last reaction is between halogen and sodium hydroxide. So, the product nanti akan produce satu water dan dua salt. Salt is a garam. 
So halogen reacts with NaO solution, alkaline solution to form water, salt and sodium halide, sodium halide. Okay. So the general equation X2 is the halogen reacts dengan NaO is sodium hydroxide to produce NaX. You replace lah nanti you guna halogen apa? The second is NaOx, sodium halide one salt and the water. Okay, example cikgu ambil chlorine. <coughs> okay. So, plus NaOH. Okay, so the first product ganti X ni dengan Cl. Because sekarang kita guna Cl. Okay, second product Na, copy balik O, copy balik X, ganti dengan Cl. Nama dia sodium chloride. One. Ini sodium halide ni. Ini sodium halide one. So, dia akan jadi sodium chloride. Because guna chlorine. The first is sodium chloride. Uh, ni NaCl, sodium chloride. This one, sodium halide. Okay, and H2O is a water. So, you pun balance-balance like equation. Tengok. Macam biasa. So, reaction dia sama juga. Kena guna since the chlorine in order to produce chlorine gas, kita react concentrated the chloride acid dengan potassium mangganate. Nanti kita akan release chlorine gas, akan masuk dalam ni dan react dengan NaO. So, observation nanti the greenish yellow gas dissolve quickly. And the greenish yellow gas is the chlorine gas lah yang kita rasa ni ni warna kuning. So, dia akan dissolve quickly. Akan larut sangat cepat. Quickly in NaO. To form colorless solution. So, dia akan produce colorless solution. Okay. So, dalam colorless solution tu nanti ada tiga benda iaitu sodium chloride, sodium chloride dan juga water. Okay. So, now kita change from chlorine kita guna bromine. So, bromine warna reddish brown liquid. Ha, ni directly saja eh. Bromine kita guna liquid bromine terus masuk dalam nao. Dissolve. Moderately, ya, secara tak laju sangat, tak perlahan sangat. Okay, in NaO to produce colorless solution. Sama juga. So, equation nanti ganti sahaja X ni dengan Br2. X ini dengan Br, nama dia jadi sodium bromide. Dan second, NaOBr, sodium bromide one. And then, last product is water. Okay, this one you must know lah the general equation. Dia tak berapa popular tapi you must know, mesti tahu. Okay, and the last is this iodine crystal. Pun iodine, replace saja. The same reaction. So, the punya observation, small amount of purplish black iodine dissolve in very slowly ya, dalam NaO. Jadi, sangat pelan untuk menunjukkan iodine ni paling kurang reaktif. Still, they form the colorless solution. Okay, so ganti saja. Dia punya salt pertama, nama saya sodium iodide. And the second salt is sodium iodide one. And the water. Okay, very simple. Operation. So, in conclusion, when going down the group 17, the reactivity decreases. So, you can explain how menggunakan 5 point yang cikgu dah ajar tadi kait dengan dia punya size, size atomic, lepas tu dia punya distance, kemudian distance between nucleus and the valence shell, kemudian dia punya attraction force between the nucleus and attraction and then the valence shell becomes weaker. So, it's harder for the atom to gain the electron. Bila dia harder, dia makin less reactive. Okay. So, some safety precaution when handling group 17. So, fluorine and chlorine are extremely toxic and reactive gases. Ha, sangat berbahaya. Eh? That's why kita tak boleh guna dia directly. Biasa kita kena react another chemical to produce the gases. So, bromine fume cause extremely painful burns when spilled on the bare skin. Ha, sama juga macam bromine ni. Walaupun dia kurang reaktif tapi still berbahaya. Bila terkena pada kulit, boleh menyebabkan kulit kita terbakar. And then, iodine vapor is very poisonous. And iodine pun sama juga. Walaupun dia kurang reaktif tapi sangat-sangat berbahaya. And group 1, group 17, semua bahaya. Okay, must use faucet to tap them and remember to wear safety goggles and gloves. Mesti guna uh, goggles dan juga gloves bila buat eksperimen group 17. And eksperimen must be done in few chamber. Kenapa dalam few chamber dalam kebut whatsapp? Because mereka ni adalah gas. Kita tak nak dia release in environment dan kita akan uh, hidu dia punya asap very dangerous eh? ok some arrangement in your textbook page 96 you can do later soon your next task is to complete your excel module 4.5 all the 4.5 alright thank you that's all